is part two of my exclusive interview with former Trump campaign manager Brad Parscale. We look ahead to 2024 and beyond. He says Republicans still have a clear path to victory in the future, specifically when it comes to increasing the share of minority vote and overcoming all of these new challenges faced by mail-in voting. Do you think there was massive fraud in this election? I can't tell you because I don't have the evidence. I watched that 60 Minutes thing, whether there was, it was the most secure election in the world, mm -hmm. you know, whether there was fraud. But I'll tell you what, I would think there's some gaming of it. And I think there's a thin line between gaming, fraud, and hacking. Mm -hmm. Hacking is breaking in. Fraud is just talking about dead people. And I think there was some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's also gaming. And gaming is all of a sudden, I show up to 50,000 households tonight after the election and backdate ballots, and all of a sudden they show up on the door. Mm -hmm. Now, some people call that fraud. I call it fraud. But Democrats would call it gaming, maybe. Maybe somebody else won't. But the system is gamed. Why, the, why can't we, uh, in a country, in 2020, find all elections results on the same night? I remember waiting in 1984, we did. Why in 2020 we can't? So, obviously, COVID drove an enormous mail-in voting transition. Mm -hmm. We've never had an election like the one we just had. 41 percent of the country voted by mail-in vote. The president cast a lot of concern on the mail-in voting environment, yeah. and it's, well, the Biden close. team did exactly the opposite, um, often from the basement, often without even campaigning, just encouraging people to vote by mail. Well, How much of an impact was that? And some people say Republicans can never win in a mail-in environment if that's the way it's going to go in the future. Well. I don't really think this was an election of Trump versus Biden. This could be Trump versus a wet paper sack, which I think Biden is in some ways. But, like, this is, this was... Pretty tough to lose he, your wet paper sack. It's, I'm telling you, it's a referendum. That's what I mean by that. Meaning, it was a vote whether you won four more years of Trump or not. It was anyone could have filled that spot, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, there would have been worse candidates like Bernie Sanders and stuff who would have drove people off. And what I mean by that is Trump... Trump turned it into a referendum, and the campaign turned it into a referendum, and it should have been a choice election. If this was a choice between Trump and Joe Biden, it, it's not, it, every poll we made shows, and every data science says, Trump wins. And I think that it, it's hard to win when, you know, you have a referendum against a, with a, a silent killer like a virus. And I think this came down to, to COVID. Who do you want to have handle COVID, and where do you want the country to go? And, um, and that's the only thing he was underwater really on. Um, Do you think, though, if we continue with mail-in voting in the future, that Republicans can win a presidential oh, of course. election? Of course. Of course. Look, in the past, mail-in voting was an advantage for Republicans in a state like Florida, yeah. because um, our people tend to mail in more. Um, I think this time the president made a referendum on showing up versus the mail. And, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, it kept being referendums. What, how do we do it? What do we do? And look, he still got the most votes you know, an amazing amount of votes. I mean, if you look at the swing states, I mean, he, he, he crushed it. And um, I still think that, that there's some gaming in the system, but we'll see if that ever comes out. Who knows how long it'll be. What's next for, for you? Well, uh, over the last four years, I, I did invent a bunch of technology that, uh, that can automate all these campaigns, um, almost like a sales force for business, that no, nothing exists in the world like it. Um, I used all the concepts and the things I learned to build a technology to automate the entire campaign, the fundraising apparatus, the data operation, the, the coalition's event planning, uh, strategic uh, data um, universe creation, connected it all with the Republican Party to this stuff. And what I'd like to do is get into a place where I can help Republicans across the country um, make their campaigns easier to run, more automated. Um, maybe sit on the back side instead of being on the front side um, and really use the knowledge of being a campaign manager literally for five years of my life, the longest six years really. I, that's all I did all day is campaign. I don't think everyone's ever done that, six years straight. And uh, utilize the technology and history of my commercial world mixed with what I learned in the political world and build a platform that makes all of us win easier. So given that, we, you talked a little bit about the increase in black and Hispanic vote in the Republican side. Do you see a changing demography in the country with the two parties right now? I mean, yes. I mean, first of all, I think it's always ever changing, right? Um, uh, I, I, look, I think the Latino vote is moving towards the Republican Party. 
But I, I think there's a, a man-woman issue, Hibben. If you see anything, if I've seen anything from the 2014 data to the 2020 data, as men have moved towards the Republican Party, and I see that little losses here, here. But overall, that, that women have migrated to the, you know, which, I mean, now at 45 years old almost, I kind of understand. <laughs> you know, men and women have different opinions and stuff. And I think we need to start seeing ourselves as what's best for our country together. And I, and I, I hope, regardless if Trump wins, which I think he will, or if Biden can wins, that that both of them just start to, like, we start to work together again. And, and um, I miss the 80s in some ways, <laughs> you know, just uh, putting space shuttles up there, you know what I mean? Like Americana and let's do this together. And I, um, uh, that's a ch I'm a child of the 80s and I, I love that. And I just, but I think, I think the parties are, you know, they both got a lot of work to do. Do you think the president should run in 2024? I think win or lose, he should run again in 2024. He can't if he wins this one. <laughs> but you didn't I, ask me a question. You asked me if I wanted but, to. But do you think that if he ends up conceding this race, or if he ends up losing this race, in you know, I, I think a lot of people feel like we're at that point. But I understand that you feel like there's still um, there's still hope. So if that were the case, if he loses, yeah, do you believe he should run in 2024? I don't know if it's my opinion what he should do, but I wish he would. I think there's still a lot of story to be told. Do I hope he makes a few little tweaks? Yes. And if he wants to call me, I'll tell him what I think those tweaks are. If he doesn't want to call me, I wish him the best of luck. Um, I think he's the best thing for this country, and I'll, and I'll be MAGA for life. Thank you, Brad. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, Martha. Be well. Yeah.